What's going on, my light and ones? It's your boy Mashi MC back again. And with great power comes great responsibility. So today's video, we're actually gonna be talking about the three great powers of One Piece and how the dynamic of that will actually be changing after Wano. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First, we're gonna talk about the warlords. All right. And specifically Boa, Hancock, and Kobe. The interaction between the two of them can really be great for both characters. So say Kobe actually defeats Boa. Yes, that is a hit to Boa's character, but that is the buff or the uh, feat or the accolade that Kobe needs to possibly become captain. I mean, I think he was rare captain and I can't remember the, the dialogue. I remember it was uh, rectified later on, but I think he can become a captain, maybe a rare admiral, maybe even, I think rare admiral, vice admiral. In that realm, he'd probably jump up to that. I'm really not sure what the rankings are for Kobe going forward, but I know he's going to end up being an admiral some way, some shape or form, maybe further in the future. But the dynamic between Kobe and Boa is that if Kobe's actually able to defeat Bo by himself. Would you say that Kobe's progression in power is astronomical? And also, when you think about it, if he's able to beat Bo by himself, I don't, I highly doubt it. I know he's probably with other vice admirals and probably uh, other forces as well. But if he's able to, to apprehend uh, uh, Bo with Hancock, not only will that show you the, the, the level of which the war government has grown or the Marines have grown, but it'll also show you why how the the great powers weren't really that strong to begin with because so the the three great powers were the warlords the uh marines and then the um yonko and if kobe's actually able to take down one of the warlords in his position and then with how he's grown and had the power he was uh uh slowly manifesting throughout his uh character development were the warlords even that strong to begin with i know they're, they're government dogs and they're um they're pirates that help the world government control other pirates and we already know how the, the situation with uh, Crocodile, the situation with Doflamingo. But if Kobe at his level is able to take down a person like Bo Hancock, who's like a top, to me, he's like a top tier combatant in all the story. Wouldn't that mean the world government was already strong? Like they were already capable enough to take down the, uh, to take on like, Yanko by themselves. I understand that like, with the, uh, the warlords, they come with territory and their power. But with Bo Hancock, she wasn't, she would never, um, march the kuja pirates to go fight for the world government if anything she denounced the world government most of the time because of the whole situation with the social dragons and she would go by herself so the power of the war the warlords wasn't as powerful because it would always just be boa it wouldn't be boa and her sisters it would just be boa and when you think about jimbei jimbei yes uh jimbei got uh, arrested and put an impel down but you think about weevil weevil's a one-man army as well besides his mother he's by himself and you think about law Law doesn't law, law and the hard pirates, yes, but it, when Law was doing the duties, it was Law by himself, and it was Moria was Moria by himself, and it was uh, Kuma Kuma by himself, and it's Crocodile Crocodile by himself, and Doflamingo Doflamingo by himself. So I'm trying to think, like, what? How powerful did they assume the uh, Warlords were, or were they assuming that not only did they get the Warlords by themselves, but they also got the people behind the Warlords? I'm trying to think, a person like Mihawk doesn't have a crew at all. So he's just like a one-man show and he has the power to possibly rival the Yonko right now. Who knows, he might be the strongest Kaido. Maybe not, he says he's the strongest Shanks because he beat Shanks. Uh, he was the world's strongest swordman before Shanks lost his arm. He doesn't want to fight Shanks because Shanks lost his arm. So how strong is Mihawk by himself to the point where like they have complete confidence in the SSG moving forward to take down Mihawk? Now you think about Jinbei. Jinbei is at least, he's at least uh, as strong as Cracker was or Paris Sparrow is um, for Big Mom. You think about Moria. Moria got taken out by the Straw Hats, but remember, Moria actually went through depression after losing his crew against Kaido. So I don't know what in what area or what time frame did he actually become uh, a uh, warlord, but he may have been pretty powerful himself. And Kuma the Tyrant, don't get me started. He was the right hand man to Dragon. I feel like Kuma is probably one of the strongest out of all the warlords. And you just haven't seen him fight. And obviously, unfortunately, he's probably dead right now. But. How strong were the actual warlords for them to be a great power? And to me, I feel like the warlords, they are pirates who have right, can rival strength with the uh, Yanko. Maybe not Crocodile. Obviously, Crocodile was able to clash with Doflamingo, uh, Whitebeard, uh, and Mihawk at one point. But he didn't have the strong enough hockey earlier in the show. And I'm not really going to get too deep into it. I feel like he was more overconfident with his Devil Fruit, trying to get to its absolute peak and not actually focusing on his hockey. But I feel like if he, had, if he has hockey, he's probably one of the top tier combatants. Easily. Easily in the show, he jumps back up. Even, even after losing to Luffy, if he gets caught, uh, not conquers hockey, but if he's able to uh, focus on armament hockey and train that to the peak and observation hockey and train that to the peak, Crocodile is easily one of the strongest characters. Because remember, he's already, his observation hockey, I feel like is actually already shown because he's actually able to, without, he's able to instinctively turn into sand when he's getting hit or attacked. So I feel like that's actually a showing of him using observation. But 
now that the world government is actually taking down the um, warlords, now let's sh uh, shift over to the Yanko. The Yanko balance is going to be shifted as well. Like like Fujitora, like Fujitora stated, the power balance in the world is going to shift drastically. Say the SSG take over the warlords, the warlords are wiped. Remember, like I gotta say, the warlords and most of the warlords, at least, I feel like Boa Hancock, uh, maybe not Dofi, but Mihawk and Ty maybe possibly Kuma before, uh, I'll say Weevil in that realm, can rival the Yonko in strength. Maybe not for like complete strength, but like they can to go toe to toe with them for a couple days. Or maybe like how Luffy. Actually, maybe that, that may be a stretch. That may be a stretch. But go toe to toe, -to -to, at least the first, like their first commanders, like probably a king, probably a Katakuri. Excuse me. Or possibly, depending on who you are, Mihawk could possibly go toe to toe with Kaido for quite some time. Maybe Kuma, before he was turned, uh, completely transformed and became a shell of himself, could probably go toe to toe with Big Mom for a little bit. Uh, and I say Boa could probably go, possibly go toe to toe with one of the warlords for a little bit. Maybe not for quite some time, maybe even a day of fighting, but who knows. I feel like Bo Hancock has advanced conquerors hockey, and I'm uh, I am a steadfast believer, and she does. That was where Luffy got sent to train in hockey. Rayleigh's a good friend with her. She probably got trained by Rayleigh in some way, shape, or form. She vowed never to be show, show weakness in front of the Celestial Dragons again, so she had to be training nonstop. Yes, Dofi was in that same position, but Dofi got complacent with uh, his ruling over uh, Dressrosa. But we move. Say the Yonko. Now, Big Mom and Kaido Yonkos right now. Uh, they formed the Rocks Rebirth Alliance or the Big Mom uh, Beast Pirates Alliance. If they those two are to fall. As well as the beast pirates to be dispersed, right? As we can see right now, even if they are to beat Kaido, no one in that in that area is passing the realm of power for Kaido. Not yet. Yes, Luffy's able to fight him toe to toe for a little bit, maybe like a couple seconds. Who knows? But they will never get to the rival strength of Kaido. At least not right now. At least not, not post Wano. Not he did not going to surpass Kaido's power. And the overwhelming aspect of the Beast Pirates, even because remember, it takes the raid with the Samurai, with Law Kid and Luffy just to take down Kaido. And they have other uh, supernovas that, as well and other things that are happening with Otama taking over the Beast Pirates. So the world government shifting power, right? The SSG taking over the Warlords. So that means Marines hold. Let's go to a pie chart. Let's, let's go uh, a pie chart. Let's go thirds. So one third per. So Warlords, the world government, and then the Yonko. Now that the Yonko are, are almost split in half, right? The Warlords are also taken over now. So it's going to be 75% basically now, right? Oh, wait, one third. They take it over one third. So now they got two thirds. Damn, I, I must be terrible at math. But I'm going to say, I'm just going to go with 75% because the two Yonkos are going down. It makes the most sense. So the, work, the world government what now possesses 75% of the great power as well as, it, but the only uh, factor that's really like, the big golden question mark is what is Blackbird going after, right? Because the Yonko hold one third of the power in, in the whole aspect of things, say with Kaido and Big Mom falling, if, Big, if Blackbird is actually going to get an ancient weapon, regardless of Big Mom and Kaido fall, the power will still reign with the, the, the Yonko because an ancient weapon holds power equivalent to possibly one Yonko, depending on which one you get. But if the world government is able to get there before Blackbird and get the ancient weapon, because I feel like that's not the whole thing. Blackbird says, if they're just going to go and take it, let's go first and take it. If that's the case, remember, Blackbird is very systematical. He goes for moves that are appropriate to him and when he feels uh, it's the best time. So Blackbird is able to go get the ancient weapon or, or fails against the ancient weapon. Would that now leave like the world government having almost complete control over everything going on? The, the, the balance will com completely shift. And that's what Fujitora said. If we put our trust in the SSG and we're successful in apprehending the, the Warlords and SSG is actually capable of replacing them, at that point, if they attain the ancient weapon, they are set in stone. And it will literally have to be a revamp of everything. And by that, I mean, Warlords are down, depending on who gets sent where and what happens with them, they will be out of the picture, possibly needing to be saved. Like if Kobe wins against Boa, Boa needs to be saved. If uh, Doflamingo is already apprehended, if Kuma is already a shell of himself, Moria is on the island with uh, with um, with Blackbeard. Crocodile is out somewhere, probably trying to redo remake his crew. Jinbei is with the Straw Hats. Weevil, we don't know what's going to happen with him. He might be apprehended as well. Mihawk may be apprehended as well, but he need, he need to be saved eventually. Now we're trying. Now we're flipping the script, and things are going to change because of now Luffy Kid and law and they will have the worst generation alliance that will come into fruition not i don't think maybe luffy becomes an emperor i mean uh yonko great but the power at which they have to replace 
is a astronomical hill to climb. And that's why I, I'm very questionable about people who think, oh, Yamato shouldn't join the crew because the crew would be too powerful. No, you don't understand. The Black Bear Pirates and the Marines now, they're going to be controlling the, the, the One Piece verse. Because Luffy does not have, yes, he has the Grand Fleet, but the Grand Fleet can't, without Luffy leading them, they can't just go and, uh, fight off the marines and they can't just go and fight off the black bear pirates it's not going to happen just how marco and them went after the black bear pirates and got decimated it can't be possible for grand fleet to go by themselves so it's going to be something like maybe law i think he's part of the grand fleet already but maybe log joins the grand fleet and yamato joins the crew and then kata curry takes over the big mom pirates so that remain to so the establishment of the grand fleet increasing in power the um the possibly uh kid taking over the beast pirates and uh he stay keeping that power so then it's law going joining the grand fleet the grand fleet increasing the power luffy getting yamato so you luffy's crew as a yanko crew increases in power kid taking over the beast pirates so the uh, kid can possibly move up to a yanko so the power balance remains the same would be shanks blackbeard kid and luffy the power balance remains the same but the world government as, as a whole can still consume the yanko depending on how things go with shanks being able to team up but that's why Kata Curry comes in. If Kata Curry is able to remain as the leader and as the focal point of the Big Mom Pirates, and he possibly allies with Luffy, K would then be control of the Beast Pirates. But I was saying like maybe Yamato doesn't join the crew and Yamato takes over the Beast Pirates and then how they uh they control. So it would be like a, a alliance, like the Rocks Alliance basically, but, but bigger. It would be the Big Mom Pirates because of Kata Curry and Luffy, and as well as the Beast Pirates because of um Luffy and Yamato. But if it doesn't happen and Yamato joins the crew, yes, Luffy gets the buff and the crew power. But at the same time, he's still going to have that connection with Wano because maybe even Momonosuke joins the uh, Straw Hats. So they still have that link to the Beast Pirates. But the Beast Pirates wouldn't be much of help if they're not active. And that's why I say they're possibly going to uh, ally with Kid. And you also have to remember, if Otama joins the Straw Hats as well, because you know Otama went to sell his ace. Not only is Otama joining, but the Beast Pirates as well are now added to the Grand Fleet. Because I don't think, unless the Beast Pirates are going to remain, uh, at least some of them are going to remain in uh, Wano and help with the restoration of the whole Wano uh, Kuni. But, if Otama joins, not only is she joining, but all the gifters that have now eaten her Kibidango. And I was talking about in my last video, that possibly, um, if you break the will of the uh, people who have an ancient zone, the arm smile users, you can possibly uh, make them eat a Kibidango Kibi and hop, hopefully they will transform or, or be submissive to Otama as well. So, they would also have to have a role. Like, what, what's Otama going to do? It's stay here and uh, Lee, uh, stay here and um, uh, stay here and restore Wano. No, what's going to happen? I feel like it's going to happen is that Ulti or Page One are going to one or two, I, th I think both of them are probably going to end up um, joining Kid. Like I say, if the Kid, if the Beast Powers join uh, go under Kid, I feel like that would be better. Like at least some of the Beast Powers, at least the Toby some of the Toby Ropo ally with Kid, or the Kid develops its own Grand Fleet in the Beast Pirates. Or uh, we think about another way that the Grand the Beast Pirates are led by one of the Toby Robo because you know they were ex captains, and then they are added to the Grand Fleet, and then somehow some way up. Uh, uh kid attracts other people to his crew maybe hawkins maybe apu maybe x drake and his crew gets a buff to be considered a yanko crew because you were after him saying that he doesn't care about law joining luffy's crew or how he'll be surprised when jinbei joined him we know that kid right now wants to rival luffy and he still wants to go for the one piece the only way shape or form that he can possibly even survive in the new world now with the whole great power shifting the world is being taken out with the ssg being included with the, the world government possibly going for ancient weapons would be for his crew to get a buff as well and if they don't get a buff kid is probably kid's crew is probably just useless in the new world at that point he has to rival luffy so his crew needs a buff because only if only kid and killer are the two main fight maybe heat if they're the three main fighting forces of the kid pirates they they don't even really stack up well against Luffy altogether. Like I'm not saying Kid is I'm not saying Zoro is stronger than Kid, but at the same time the, the strength right there is very like very close. Zoro is surpassing Killer. If Yamato joins the crew, Yamato is around the same level as Kid possibly. And if Sanji uh, masters the suit, he's possibly up there too. And Jinbei could probably go toe to toe with Kid as well. So at, at that point, it's almost like Kid's Kid's crew is just like there. They're just like a talking point, not really something that can be like at a a good plot, plot line going forward unless he gets that buff so what i believe is going to happen like i stated before the world government is going to succeed in the the uh taking down the warlords and not on all not on all uh, on all uh not on all uh what's the word not on all fronts i feel like they win 
against uh, Weevil, or not win, not win, but have Weevil on the run. I feel like Mihawk probably wins as well, but then he joins the, uh, the Shanks crew. Boa will be the one to actually get apprehended. And it sucks because of her character and how it goes, but I don't think she's going to lose to actually lose to um lose to Kobe himself. I feel like the SSG is gonna get involved and possibly the interaction between Kobe and Boa is gonna go along the lines of Luffy. And Kobe's gonna want to be the one to keep her alive. Not the one to, to take her in by himself. He might be the one to like fight her for a little bit, but he's gonna be the one to take her in, but also keep her alive. More is with Blackbeard, and if he's not dead, him and Blackbeard going to get the ancient weapon is going to be astronomical in the power shifting. Because if that's the case, right, then it then it stays 50-50. If he's not able to get the ancient weapons, then it becomes 75-25. Because granted, the Blackbeard powers are strong, Shanks powers are strong, Luffy and Kid's powers are possibly strong, but the world government, now with the SSG able to take down, able to not need the warlords anymore, as long with the ancient weapons, it is just a power balance shift that is not. Uh, comparable right now because one kid and luffy don't even know what's going on in the outside world and that's why i think the cp0 and uh, other forces coming to wano is going to play a big factor in it yes x drake and being able to contact kobe but the situation with kobe and boa hancock and and unless it like, unless kobe wins uh x drake's not gonna be able to communicate with them right away and plus this, who knows how long this war uh, this war is gonna go on for if it fails then you, it could be the next couple weeks before everything actually uh plans out so that's that so the power balance right now is in a disarray. I don't know. I don't see which way it's going to fall, which way it's going to topple. Because, like I said, if Yamato doesn't join the Strikes crew, they're not a strong enough crew to replace a crew like Big Moms and like Kaido's. Yes, Luffy is strong and up there in the uh, Yanko level, but not quite there yet. But the rest of the crew, I mean, I mean, yes and no. They fall in a great, I mean, all right, let's break it down. Let's break it down for quickly. All right, Zoro and Sanji, I'd say they're both around first, second commander level. They're around, maybe not as strong as Katakuri, but in that ballpark. They could probably be like a snack or a cracker. I feel like Zoro's getting there. I feel like Zoro, after he masters Emma and Zoro and Sanji, after he masters his race, they're both going to jump up to around first, second commander level. And you think about Jinbei, Jinbei's already a warlord level. He can already fight someone who's an ex captain, who's a Toby Ropo, who can possibly fight an all star. So Jinbei's around there as well. Remember, Iron, Iron Pirate Frankie is also fighting an ex captain who also wanted to challenge, as in Sasuke, also wanted to challenge the Toby Ropo as well. So, around that level, I mean, they're pretty strong. Now, I'm just got an upgrade with Zeus. Uh, Usopp is locking, uh, conquer, I mean, locking his arm in hockey and maybe possibly get an upgrade in, uh, in his Kabuto eating a devil fruit. So, that's also an upgrade. Chopper now being able to extend his monster point. And also, he's getting being smarter with uh, how he's able to manipulate uh, his uh, Rumble Ball. Uh, who else? Brooke, who knows what Brooke's gonna happen? Who knows what's gonna happen with Brooke yet? But I, I love Brooke. Brooke's strong. He's really able to manipulate souls, being the soul king. Uh, Robin being the literally the the she's probably the most wanted uh, person besides Dragon because of her knowledge of, of with with her backstory with O'Hara. Maybe she's not the most wanted, but like she has the most knowledge that the government should be fearful of. Um, uh, I think I named everyone. Luffy, I mean Luffy, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Brooke, Nami, Usopp. Jinbei, Chopper, Frankie. Am I missing someone? Robin, sorry. So that's 10. And I think what I want to happen is Caesar joining. I, I'm, I'm so hell on this whole Caesar thing, but at the same time, I feel like it's not going to be just Caesar. So I feel like it's going to be Caesar, Yamato, uh, Otama, and um, Otama and Momonosuke. And the reason why I want Otama to join too, and remember, the reason why I want Caesar to join too, is because if Caesar, Frankie, Caesar, Frankie, and uh, Usopp are able to work together. It reminds me of the whole Judge, Vegapunk, and uh, Queen when they were working together. And if they're able to reproduce a rage suit for Otama possibly to protect her, I feel like that fits well. And if another person, if Yamato joins, she can be like the, um, or he can be the uh, retainer or the re protector of, of Otama and Momonosuke, depending if Momonosuke gets aged or not. But the power balance is completely screwed right now and there's no which way to but the thing is blackbeard is the key in which if the balance remains or the balance is shifted entirely so you have to pay attention to the next break i can't wait for it to have in the next break we get another news drop with holding with sabo and the thing is i didn't even talk about the revolutionary army but the revolutionary army already took a great hit losing kuma depending on what happened to sabo they take another big hit and now this is where the revolutionary army they already they already started a war or declared war with the special dragons so they can't be losing their big pieces and if, depending if there's a traitor or not who knows? And you also have to remember the world government now ha not only had they lost Alkiji, that's big. And remember, Alkiji probably with the Blackbeard Pirates too, so that just shows you how strong the Blackbeard Pirates really are. 
but they got Fujitora and Green Bull. They also have Ch uh, Chanton and Gion. I feel like those two uh, people who could have been Admirals. They also have Kong still. They still have Garp, even though he's not really active. He still has Sengoku. You have uh, Aokiji. I mean, Aki Akiinu. You still have the uh, the elders. You still have Imusama. You, you still have the the uh, thing that Dolph Mingo was talking about under Marriage Wall that's there. Like, there's a lot of the world government still have under their power that can possibly rival the Yonko. And now the SSG. The SSG is so... I think the two biggest aspects to take away from this. The SSG is really important. And whatever what happens with Blackbird is really important. Because depending on those two things, the balance could be, okay, it's time to go out and just eradicate the pirates. Like, just take them out. We have the SSG. We don't need anything else. The, we know what the... With the, the the ancient weapon is in Alabasta. We can go there and beat Black Bear to get it. At this point, just take out pirates. Oh, Wano, Luffy, Kid, Law there, the worst generation, Kaido, Big Mom's taken out. Oh, the, two, the two most powerful forces that we're worried about right now, let's go wipe them out. So what I think is going to happen is they, the worst generation alliance is going to happen, or the true worst generation alliance is going to happen with Luffy, Law, and Kid. And as well as I feel like Big Mom Pirates being led by Katakura is also going to be involved in that. And that's going to remain keep the balance remaining, but also start the path down to the greatest war this planet has ever seen. That Kaido wanted to start, and he may not be able to see it, but it's going to happen regardless. But what do you guys think, guys? Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think the world, Great War powers are going to be and if things are going to change drastically after this arc. Uh, like I said, at the end of every single video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell button to come back next time and remain in Latin, y'all. Peace.